I'm here today with Professor Benjamin Hatt. He's a professor of history at the Hunter College and the Graduate Center at the City University of New York. Um, you're also an author and an expert on pre- and post-war Germany, and you often draw parallels also to our modern democracies. Um, how would you say is looking at the past can help us recognize the threats to our modern democracies? So I guess I wouldn't be a history professor if I thought there wasn't some use in this. And I think what I would say is there are certain kinds of political messages and political movements which unfortunately have a sort of eternal appeal. Appeals to nationalism, appeals to xenophobia, to race, um, to resisting the influence of the world on one's own country. And these were the kinds of impulses that led to the rise of fascism in the 1920s and 1930s. And unfortunately, we see a lot of these same impulses having appeal in most democratic countries for a lot of the same reasons, economic stress and so on, uh, immigration flows, uh, that kind of thing. We see these appeals having the same kind of stress today, and we see some of the same kind of political forms emerging again as we saw uh, 190 and 80 years ago. Thank you so much. At the Aspen Institute, we're obviously always also interested in the transatlantic relationship. How do you think the transatlantic alliance um, can, yeah, what is their role in countering these threats to democracy? So I think the transatlantic alliance is part of uh, one of the great uh, political and diplomatic achievements in all of human history, really. I think the whole post-World War II order, of which the transatlantic alliance is such a key part, uh, really put the world after World War II on a, a vastly better path. And we often think of the transatlantic alliance in military terms as NATO, but I think it's a lot more than that. NATO really reflects, I think, a community of values of the democratic countries of, of the Atlantic world. Um, and right now, especially with what's happening in the war in Ukraine, we see these values coming directly under threat from a, a brutal authoritarian and basically genocidal regime, much as happened you know, 80 odd years ago. Um, and I think the kinds of values that the Atlantic Alliance uh, embodies are uh, the only way to deal with threats like that. And I think the solidarity in the alliance is really crucial at this time. You've already mentioned the war in Ukraine. That's obviously a huge threat to our modern democracies in the heart of Europe. Um, where do you see this current war in Ukraine fitting in an overall threats to democracy that you've just described? So I think that the war in Ukraine in some ways is a little bit like the Spanish Civil War of the late 1930s, which many people at that time saw as kind of an opening act to a fight between fascism and more democratic forms of society. And I think um, the war in Ukraine is that kind of, in a way, test case for us now. This is right now in our world, this is where really the rubber hits the road in terms of the fight between authoritarianism and a more democratic, uh, globally-minded, and inclusive kind of world order and society in each individual countries. Uh, so I think that what happens in Ukraine is really decisive for the world. Um, if the Ukrainians were to lose and uh, Russia were to get control of Ukraine, I think this would be a crushing defeat uh, for the global democratic order. I think it's, it's vital that Ukraine win, and I, I, therefore I, I cheer every effort by, by NATO, by the EU, by Western democracies um, to do whatever we can possibly do to help Ukraine win this war. Thank you so much for these important words and for being here today to talk about the threats to democracy. Um, it's very important to keep talking about how like the past influences the future, the present, and uh, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you very much.